I didn't really have much of an idea about New Orleans at all. I had no desire to go to Louisiana or to New Orleans at all. I couldn't stand it when I got here. It was everything's broken and you know it smells weird and it never gets cold and it's wet and the idea of going to Louisiana for any length of time was abhorrent to me. And uh, you know this you know absolutely the end of the of the world is like going to Vietnam or something. <laughs> I came all the way from Italy Shooting documentaries on New Orleans On a shotgun boogie Shotgun boogie I know that time is not on my side Unless I find the love of my life On a shotgun boogie Shotgun boogie Okay, I'm a sound engineer from Italy working on a documentary about the city of New Orleans with a six months visa with the help of a couple of friends that are insiders as me. We're asking questions to musicians that are returning our call. My English is not good. This is pretty much what I can tell you in 30 seconds. This is not gonna be better than the other one. Am I good? You're good, and I'm recording. You are? I'm recording, I pushed go. Doesn't look like it. Trust me, it's gonna be great. All right. You trust me? Let's do it, do our chaka. Let's go. What are we doing? Chuck. Come on. I don't know what that is. A chuck? New Orleans is not the South. It's not. New Orleans isn't the rest of Louisiana. It's just not. New Orleans is, it's, 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 it's Cairo. It's Budapest. It's Tokyo. It's the port. It's New York. It's San Francisco. It's where if you need to get to the rest of the country, this is a good place to start. And so every culture has funneled through this delta to go up the Mississippi and do what they have to, or they just get here and they're like, why would I ever leave? We are founded by nuns, pirates, and hookers. Well, they say it never rains in California And I've only been out here but let me tell you, brother, this weather's like no other. These gray days turn into rainy nights. Gray days, these gloomy days. When I was a kid, I, I, I didn't even think that New Orleans was part of Louisiana. I thought it was like a different country that we were going to. And so it took me a while to realize that. Uh, yeah, it was part of Louisiana, so. <laughs> the hardest thing is when you get into a city and you think, what city is this again? Like, there's nothing about it that you can tell any difference, you know? There's a McDonald's and a, and a Walgreens, and, and everything is the same, and you don't know what makes this unique, you know? And you, you pull into the center of New Orleans, there's no mistaking that it's New Orleans. Those long rainy nights, those rainy nights turn into sunny days. Has its own uh, rhythms that are very unique to the city and and the culture, and just a different way of going about doing things. This is one of the few places that has those old, broken things, but the, the deep culture, you know. I mean, there's the stench of decay, you know, everywhere. There's also life coming up through the cracks everywhere. We can't suppress the life force here. It's, you know, things are growing, mold and people and, uh, you know, music everywhere. This music comes out of the streets, you know. It's got a culture 
especially the Mardi Gras Indians and the brass bands and the parades that you don't find anywhere else in America for sure. Okay, we have two cameras, two tripods, mm -hmm. lenses. What else do we need? has always had sort of a mystique around it, the, the city and with the, the, the culture, the history, the, the people think of voodoo and they think of the Mardi Gras Indians, the black Indians and the, the music itself and the jazz funerals and everything. Because it's healing. It's healing to such a broken place. It really is. No matter how ugly the club, the better the party. You know, like for real, that's why no matter what you do, you can't quiet it. It is the noise after the storm. It is the awakening. Now if your heart is heavy, maybe this will keep you steady. Those rainy nights. But there is something special, something energetic, something spiritual, something magical that comes from this place and the people of this place. And so I think the people that come to New Orleans they either love or they hate it, you know? There's no in between. Or maybe we can use these and do everything of these in black and white, if it makes sense. I like black and white. Mm. I don't know, it's not attractive. Then why did you suggest it? It just felt like every, there were so many secrets. It was like a mystery that I wasn't, wasn't sure I like really fit into or enjoyed, you know? There are a lot of other beautiful vacation destinations around the world and in other parts of the United States too. But the, the music, the culture, the food, uh, the people here, the characters, the colorful characters, all make the ingredients for a city that's unique and special in a way that many other cities are not. Everybody's a character, everybody has a story and they want to tell it to you and they're genuine and they're, you know, they're kind, they're warm people, they're crazy but in the best kind of way, the best kind of crazy. I feel like in the world there's like this stifling of real exploration of public emotion. And I think that here it's very acceptable to be a human being. You'll meet people here that just feel like people, period. No color, no race, no different ethnicity. And if they are, you just take it as something to learn from instead of a difference, you know? People who are so, I don't know, just uninhibited in their own, uh, you know, with, with who they are. They don't, you know, they're not trying to be anything or fit into anything because New Orleans is a place that embraces strangeness, you know, and creativity and creative people. Every corner that you turn is like this art installation or something, the way people decorate their yards and, the way people come out in the street and are just listening to music and cooking food, and it's comforting to be in a place that's just so receptive to creativity. New Orleans is not necessarily what you make of it because it will make you. If you, you know, go on Bourbon or Frenchman or Oak Street, you will be inspired, you will be intrigued, you know? So it's a special city because they keep, they preserve a lot of things for your eyes. Now? So this is gonna happen. We gotta celebrate. Special, special day, special day. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Bruno! Yeah, we did it! Let's come here. <laughs> the person that we're gonna interview today is like really special, right? Mm -hmm. So we gotta celebrate. Nice. It's not that it's really early in the morning, right? No. Yeah. No, it's, it's afternoon. Almost sunset. 
<laughs> Salute. Salute. Good job. All right. What's so special about today? When uh, we first moved here, I felt like we didn't really fit into the city so much. But then it was from seeing this uh, artist, it felt like, ah, this is the New Orleans we've been waiting to find. Just his sound. Even like listening to him from outside the bar, you're like, yeah. It just feels like the right thing. I feel like it's something that you have to be there too. Are we finishing this now? Well, I mean, maybe we should leave something for Bruno. What do you think? Bruno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bruno's gonna love it. See, when I first came down to New Orleans, everything was just I mean, lit up, and everybody's having fun, balling. I said, wow, this is, this is just what I need. This is the place for me. This is where I'm supposed to be. So my mom, she said, boy, how did you enjoy your trip? Did you like it? I said, no, I didn't like it. I love it. But I got down to New Orleans around Halloween time and was wearing a T-shirt. And I decided that I was going to go back to Boston, get all my stuff, and ship it down to New Orleans. And I just moved. For me, what was better was moving here, you know, being a part of this. Because of a dream, you know. You got the money on the You got the money on the What did you know about New Orleans before coming here? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I just knew, you know, like I was raised in the South, so there were some things that I expected when I moved here, just it being a Southern city, but you no, know, I had no idea. You know, I, I, I didn't know that it was a music town, you know, and I didn't know that I was going to be in, involved with music. It really made that different for you. It changed your life. Totally, totally. I mean, I, I, I don't even, I have no idea what would have happened if I'd ended up in Portland. Oregon, or in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, or Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, when I first got down here, how did I feel? I guess uh, embarrassingly horny. I was young. I was 19 years old, and I was just uh, like, uh, running around and and found the place just really uh, alive and sexy and dark and weird and anything that I wanted to be at that point in time. Yeah. It's just like a great part of gumbo. Whatever you ask for or either desire for, it's here. And that's what's so great about it to me. And once you get here, you get hooked. You get a number eight hook hooked in you. And you can't not get it out. <laughs> There's something weird about this city. It's kind of got this creepy energy and I wasn't sure if I was really into it honestly. Dangerous. <laughs> I always felt like a fight was gonna break out. It was a good time. Oh it's a it's a very dangerous city. I mean the city doesn't make any sense, you know? It's it's under water, you know, it's under sea level and it's in this bend of the river that at any minute could just flop over and you know wipe out the city. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ha, ha, ha.